we have had Russ react, we've had Anton react, what well, I've been reading your comments, and now it's time for Holly reacts. Lego. <laughs> Yes, West Ham Network, it's that show where we take a look at your comments from the section where you leave all your thoughts below and we dissect them. We give our opinions on them and I want to hear your thoughts on all the comments below once again. And make sure you leave us a comment because I'm going to be looking through the comments in this video for the next Reacts video. So up first, we have got, though our squad depth isn't the deepest, there are a few players who haven't been selected recently who have it in them to ask questions of the 11 in this fixture. Phillips, Aged and Johnson should all be trying to make an excellent impression I'd be interested to see how Antonio's fitness is coming along also. So we obviously are playing similar players week in, week out, but there are some players that are knocking on the door, one of which really surprised me, which I didn't expect to see at the beginning of the season, was Johnson. In my opinion, he'd kind of hit the peak of where he was going to go to and we needed far better. We played him in midfield and he was actually outstanding, which was definitely a shock. Um, as I know, as many of you, judging by the comments and everything that I saw on Twitter or X at the time when we actually um, just threw him on the pitch like that. Aged obviously does want his place in the starting 11. And Phillips has a job to prove because he's obviously had the rockiest start he could have had. Um, you get a red card and you give away a goal first game and second game, was it? Um, <laughs> you've got a big job ahead of you, but I do believe that he is still capable of it. So I completely agree with this, that we don't have the most squad depth, but we do have a few people that are knocking on the door wanting to get into that starting 11. Um, but do you agree? Let us know in the comments. Is it Phillips again and Johnson that are the most likely to? In my opinion, I think Phillips is going to be an interesting one because I think we will try and make most of him and use him while we do have him at our disposal. It would be silly not to, but he's going to have to make an impression really quickly because otherwise I think he's going to be forgotten about. I was very excited to see what he could do and I do still think he's got potential but he's got to stop having howlers because there are only so many howlers you can have before you're never given a second opportunity. Again, again one that I'm not completely convinced with and I feel like that whole area on the pitch, it's kind of a toss up between who we should and shouldn't play. Um, one of them will have a bad game. Zuma's knees are obviously massively struggling so again would be hoping to play. And yeah, Johnson, I think when he's actually been given the opportunities, he has performed well and does deserve to be given a little bit more game time. Is it in our back line? I'm not sure. Um, but if he can play like he did in the midfield when we popped him on, I'd like to see some more of him as well. For our next one that we have, football is about results. Never in my life have I come away from a football match and after a win thought to myself, yeah, but we didn't complete a 10 pass move though, so it doesn't count. So we're just going to look at that little bit of it. I completely agree and I think that football is very much results based. I know that the owners of the club look at it pretty much solely as results based whereas as fans we also want to be entertained we want to feel that that passion I think West Ham is a club where we want to see that those players would die on the pitch for us they would do anything to get that win and that's something that we have been struggling with and lacking especially with a bit of a lack of leadership it just feels like why are we not getting riled up enough and then we know it rubs off on all the fans it's difficult to get the atmosphere going at a stadium and things get more and more difficult but I completely agree with this, that when you get a win, I'm a massive fan of just just enjoying a win. And it felt really difficult to enjoy a win recently because there's a lot of negativity, um, obviously, around everything else that's going on. But for me, you've got to take the, the small wins in football and enjoy all the positive moments. So I was definitely one of those that was celebrating wins like we have managed to get recently, especially when we haven't been expecting it. So looking into the second part of this, Everton are a big, fit, strong, an extremely well-organised side. I'm sorry, but if you can't be happy with a 3-1 win against Everton side, there's something wrong. Now, this is one that definitely divided a lot of opinions, and I'm interested again to hear your thoughts, so let us know in the comments. For me, I'm always going to be delighted with a win. Sometimes it's a little bit bittersweet when it feels as though we've just scraped a win or we didn't deserve a win. But at the moment, I think all points are very important. And it's almost a case of us trying to get European football. And again, we go again next season because we've had a bit of a fall from grace from where we were. But I don't think it's too late for us to actually pick that up. 
Um, I think we're going to have to make some big organisational changes for us to achieve that. But at the moment, every point matters. And I would never want to see us drop points just for the sake of proving a point, whether it's a manager that needs to leave or something that needs to be done differently. So for me, I'm one of those that's out there celebrating the three points regardless. Um, but it has felt a little bit more difficult recently to celebrate it because every time I post on Twitter, I basically say that I'm excited about three points. People would be like, but did you not see how we performed? I did. I promise you all. <laughs> Unfortunately, I did see how we performed. Um, and it is difficult. But again, the Premier League, as we have said here, the Premier League is extremely competitive. It is difficult. And you look at how teams underperform, teams like Chelsea that have spent an absolute fortune. And we thought often that was the, the solution. You bring in the big players, you'll be OK. Investment, there's so much more to it than just investing in players when you look at Chelsea and how they're actually performing at the moment. So, yeah. It's difficult times, but I believe in the Premier League, it is very difficult. We've gone from fighting relegation. Not that we shouldn't be more ambitious now. I want us to shoot for the stars. I don't want us to go, oh, it's great being mid-table now because we're no longer fighting relegation. I'm really glad that we got to mid-table and I'm really glad we've got European football. But this is where you can build that momentum and it either picks up or it slows down. I want us to pick it up. Um, so obviously I want us to play really well, but it's not easy in the Premier League and things are things are difficult. We do nab the odd result against difficult teams. We do throw away points against easy teams or teams that should be easy. But in the Premier League, nothing is a given. Let's play against Sheffield United than it should be. <laughs> but yes, my opinion on that is that it isn't easy, but we've got, to, we've got to celebrate the good times, even if we believe that there's still more work that needs to be done. For me, I want to be happy about those wins. And for our next comment, which is struggling to load, it's not rocket science to make plan A and B for transfers. So this was in relation to Paqueta and whether or not we should bring him back up in case he gets banned or whether we should kind of just kick the can down the road and see what happens. So John here has said it's not rocket science to make plan A and B for transfers if he stays or goes, which I completely agree with. We definitely need to have those different options available so that nothing takes us by surprise because I know sometimes it seems as though Things do take us by surprise at West Ham, which are relatively predictable, or maybe we haven't planned far in advance or planned enough backup options for what we can do. Maybe we should let it know, let it be known that we're not happy to sell after a specified date in the window so we can get a replacement in time. I'm a massive fan of this, just basically throwing our weight around and saying, look, if you do it after this date, he's not going to be going. So teams will have to do it early. And it does then give us time to bring in another player. And if we know exactly which players we want to bring in for, Paqueta, should that happen, then I think that's the best way to approach it. That said, I do not want to lose Paqueta. I do not want to lose him at all. We've seen how pivotal he is, the way that we play, the way that he's bringing in players, the way that he's linking everything up. So it would be a bit of a travesty to lose him. So I'm really hoping this isn't something that we've got to worry about. And I also asked whether we need to bring in, basically, who we need to bring in in the defence. And John here has said, regarding centre-backs, of Bono, Zuma and Aguerd need to be replaced. Maybe of the three promote one from our youth so again i would love to see some of the youth come through but i think it needs to be done at the right time obona zuma and again obona he's too old isn't he he does all right as a backup he's also had a couple of little mistakes when we have brought him on which is something he's not done in previous seasons so it does feel as though his time's up and he's aging but he is a great player to have as backup zuma you can see just looking at him a um, couple of seasons back, his decision making was fantastic. The way he played was amazing, but his knees just do not have it in him anymore. Like he, he can't keep going, bless him. I don't know what he needs. I don't know if you can do two full knee replacements, but I imagine you can't play football again after that. Um, but yeah, he's just not fit to play. And it breaks my heart to say that because I don't have anything against the guy and he's the one that's being put on the pitch and still trying to give everything. So I try to not get angry at him, but I'm certainly very sad about the state of his knees and how slow he looks to just get off the blocks. And it means we have to play a low block and it is really impacting the way that we defend really. And Gerd as well, a player that I had very high hopes for when he joined. Um, and he has brought a lot to the team in the way that he can contribute to the attack and play balls sort of up the pitch. However, some of the mistakes that we've had in that back line are pretty unforgivable. And it feels like someone needs to take leadership over that. And and I don't know if Gerd is is good enough and strong enough to make the right decisions at the back, unfortunately. So I think I agree that any of the three of them could go, but I wouldn't want to just get all, rid of all three and bring in two random players that are unproven and promote a youth player because I don't think that would end up going particularly well. 
Now, we have a massive comment next. So I'm just going to have to scoot over here. So we're going to break it down, in fact, into little points. And I just feel like I'm going to have to get very close to the screen because this is tiny. So being aggressively moise in and moise out to the point of campaigning for his contract renewal or mid-season sacking at this stage is so basic. We've had a noticeable growth in stature over the past four years, and I don't want to gamble all our momentum on a mid-season role of the roll of the dice because of fan pressure so this post here is talking about the Moyes in versus the Moyes out brigade um and it does feel that this has kind of taken over a lot of social media a lot of debate a lot of content and arguably i've also been posting a load of content because there's so much to be said for both sides of the argument but it does seem similar to what you're saying here that almost the Moyes in versus Moyes out debate has overshadowed the actual football the football that we love the game that we enjoy the the moments that we could be getting some joy from some stress as well obviously but mainly joy would I swap Moyes for a better manager who has been properly scouted and evaluated with growth in mind yes so I completely agree with this I think whoever we bring in to replace Moyes needs to be ready to go needs to have a strategy and they need to be able to to fit into the style of play that we want we need to have a game plan we don't just want to bring someone in blindly and go let's see if this works because that we don't have the time to, to be able to let someone settle in slowly. It's really got to be something that happens quite quickly. Would I swap him for just anyone like Cooper Potter or Rafa? No. Again, I agree with this. A lot of people have been saying like anyone would be better than Moyes. And at times, yes, it would be interesting to see, in my opinion, what someone else could do instead of Moyes. However, if you just bring in anyone, it's only going to be a matter of time before things start to go wrong. And if you're going to up literally... When you replace a manager, you make it so much more difficult for the players that have to get used to the style of play, the players they want to bring in. You've got to put budget behind them because I'm a massive believer that you need to back someone. You can't just bring them in and not actually back them financially and in terms of the style of play and the decisions that they want to make. So you need to give this person financial backing in the transfer windows. So I don't think you should just bring in anyone just for the sake of it being different because I think it needs to be someone with the, the, the vision that we need to actually take us forward long term because I wouldn't want us six months later to be chopping and changing and become one of those teams where you just constantly change your manager because it isn't working. Um, that said, there are many managers out there who can bring what we need and it's just a matter of going after them and making it work. Would I rather we went on a massive losing run for the sake of sacking him? No. Now, I doubt anyone would really want us to lose just for the sake of sacking him. But I have seen a few posts on social media that suggest that people are almost a little bit disappointed that we're winning because it kind of gives Moyes a bit longer and drags things on a little bit. And to an extent, I do understand that. Um, but for me, I can never celebrate us losing. I just want West Ham to win and to do well. Um, so it's definitely a difficult one because I know that it does kick the can down the road a little bit. And when someone does start to find a run of results and get a couple of wins on the bounce, it then makes it almost impossible to sack somebody that already wasn't being sacked when we were losing um so it does kick the can down the road to an extent would I rather we won more games qualify for Europe again regardless of manager yes of course again just comes down to the success side of things I just want us to win always want us to win and do well but at the same time I want us to have that passion and I want to see us actually win things would I give Tim a shot at replacing Moyes at the end of the season this is one that I want you to comment below with because I want to know would you like to see Tim Stighton take things over strategy wise he seems to have it down um in terms of actual tactics on the pitch I'm not entirely sure but I also believe he could definitely recruit the right people to give him the insights that he needs to sort of form a dream team so it'd be a very different approach to the way that we would play um but Tim Stighton so far I've got no reason to doubt what he does is this something that's even of interest to him though I have no idea because I know that he likes to he likes to go and scout and find talent and there's no way he'd be able to do that as well as managing the team but would you want to see Tim let us know in the comments if we lose Tim to Liverpool would I want Sullivan and Brady to find a replacement before appointing another director of football no we need to evaluate the situation at the end of the season and make the best decisions available at the time the fan base needs some composure until the end of the season I will enjoy the wins and moan about the losses as per usual, whilst ignoring the people on both sides that are trying to push things that they think prove them right, whilst ignoring the things that don't fit their argument. Both sides are being short-sighted, dismissive, repetitive and boring. Come on, you irons. So, <laughs> I kind of agree. I think the problem is that when we get a and up on it as West Ham fans, we know what we want, we know what we don't like. And I think it makes it very difficult sometimes to overlook the fact that we believe that's the right path to success. 
I love that the people that I tend to communicate with on YouTube, on social media, they're the people that can listen to both sides of a debate. But there are definitely sides of every single fan base where people do not like criticism. They do not like a different opinion and they will jump down your throat. The amount of times where I say something and someone will be like, but what about this? And it's a completely different topic. It's like I could say I ate a ham sandwich and someone would say, but what about cheese? Like I wasn't talking about cheese sandwiches. I like cheese sandwiches. I just was talking about ham sandwiches right now. So there are definitely a percentage of every single fan base that are looking to get offended or hurt or to disagree with you. And after a loss, don't get me wrong, I'm also very angry. I'm very cross. I'm very frustrated. And that's often why at the moment, I've not really been posting very much after we lose because even if you say something that you think, people will attack you. And I get it. I get that we're all frustrated. Um, but I don't think we need to be continuously talking about the same argument when realistically, I guess, it's out of our control to an extent. So I don't want to ruin my enjoyment. Bear with, my alarm has just gone off. That's perfect timing. I do not want to. <laughs> I do not want to ruin my enjoyment of football just because I'm trying to push a certain idea that I think will benefit us or not benefit us. Don't get me wrong. I do think that a new manager is the way that we have to go for us to actually progress as a team, as a club. But at the moment, I just want us to to almost be level headed to work on on the pitch to get those results, to work behind the scenes, to work out who the next manager could be and how we introduce them, to work behind the scenes of which players we bring in, how we attract that talent. I just want all the separate pieces of the puzzle to be working together. Um, and yeah, as a fan, I'm kind of enjoying the separate aspects of it. If Moyes leaves, I will support that and be really excited about whoever comes in. When we get three points, I'm going to be out there celebrating that win. When we lose, I'm going to be frustrated with everyone else about why we've lost and what's going wrong and which players need replacing. And when we have the transfer window, I'm expecting big things this this summer because it's now or never this is when we either bring in talent to strengthen our team to give us squad depth to make sure that we guarantee Europe next season and to make sure that we do keep our best players um, and if we don't I think it's going to be a really long slog to the end of the season where we'll inevitably lose European football so I reckon in my opinion we just need to to take the little wins and enjoy it and that's what I like to do but I know that that's my take on football and it's not it's not the same as everyone else's anyway that is my take but let us know again what you think in the comments because I know it's not for everyone And last but not least, Ariola. He has been saving us recently. Ariola is a world-class keeper, says Alan, and should be able to get the number one France shirt back. The only thing that lets him down is his need to communicate with our backs more. Now, this is one that we need to discuss because Ariola, the, when we had Fabianski, I was a little bit like, oh, Fabianski is doing quite well for us. And then we obviously did that transition. And the whole benefit of, of Fabianski leaving was that Ariola was better with the ball distribution, which is really exciting because we can play out faster from the back we could get the ball up and then when we went back to having Fabianski you really could see that difference you could see the 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 lack of pace I suppose out from the back of us actually doing something with the ball so Ariola's done really well with that but recently I have been so pleasantly surprised with some of the saves that this guy is pulling off are unbelievable would I say he's world class I don't think many people would consider him world class at the moment but the saves that he's been pulling off recently have been world class and the difference that it's made to our score lines has been irreplaceable um it's been honestly incredible and you only have to watch the last game to see how many saves he pulled off how many shots they had on target and how many shots they scored to realize that Ariola kept us in that game long enough for us to smash and grab and get that get that goal get the goals and uh take those three points so Ariola 100% is doing incredibly would I say he's world class I think he's got a little bit more time to prove that he is um and he needs to communicate with our backs more yes this is the downside in my opinion of Ariola's game is that he just doesn't really talk too much um and because of that we see quite a lot of miscommunications at the back and whether it's up to him to do that or not remains to be seen however someone's got to take charge take charge of it and Ariola being the goalkeeper it's a no-brainer for me that he needs to command the box and he needs to tell people where to go and what to do so well done to Ariola because he's doing incredibly at the moment so there we have it that is my react for today but I know there's a million comments so there's always more to be reacting to let us know in the comments what you would like me to discuss as well because I will be chatting about some of those in the next Holly Reacts video thank you so much as always for watching apologies for my alarm going off and me having to just disappear midstream there but you know 
we move. Have a great day, whatever you're up to. And until next time, come on, you irons. <laughs>